All of those mugs that you see on that shelf right there are all Tim's, which means I can't just confiscate them and make them into mine. So <laughs> it's time to throw. In each instance, I am working with one pound of Buffalo Wallow clay from Armadillo Clay in Austin. I'm looking for 13 centimeters tall at the minimum and 10 and a half centimeters across will uh, fit a travel lid. I also had never attempted this many balls of clay in a single day before. So I'm beginning to hone in on those little things that um, create that muscle memory that gives you consistent results. And so that's exciting. That's very exciting. It does appear that at some point I got this slush bucket mixed up and this is not the slush bucket for Buffalo Wallow. Let's stop pulling handles. You need a piece of well wood, wedged clay, obviously, that's no, um, and you want one end of it um, smaller than the other. Uh, you can bang it out, you can spiral wedge it, you can do any number of things, um, but the end needs to come to a point. And then you can roll it in your hands like this, and it will basically extrude itself out the bottom. At least that's how somebody um, explained it to me. But it comes out in a really nice, even log. Uh, as it bends, you can go down and work with it a little bit more, but you just kind of move your hands up the... Uh, up the lug of clay. Mm. Speak, Emily, you can do it. Uh, you can do this smaller, um, you know, just like this and turn. So see how I'm turning it? You can do it small like that, or you can just go right after it. But when you have something that's, you know, got a good hold on it up here, and it, it's coming out in, in pretty much of an even fashion. That's when you're ready for the water. The first thing you do is just get it wet. Just get it wet and smooth out all those little marks. And don't worry about pulling anything because gravity is going to do most of the work. And that is something that I don't think I really understood was how much of the work gravity does you're not pulling it. Gravity is pulling it. You're shaping it. Okay? And just like on the wheel when we shape, uh, we push out from the inside and then lift up with the outside hands. And you get that bump. Well, you can do that while you're pulling handles. And turn it over to the other side and shape it that way just by pushing it out. What's going to happen is you're going to get a bump here at the bottom. You see how it goes thin and then it goes, you can't really tell, but you can feel it. 
can't really see it as well as you can feel it. Um, you're going to get a bump here at the bottom, and it's likely to come off in one of these. But that's okay. You'll get there. And when I feel that bump, I can come down here. I can mess with it a little bit. And sometimes I can prevent it from actually coming off. Most of the time, it will come off. And um, the idea is, for me anyway, is to keep this pointed at the end. Keep this pointed at the end and pull off the pressure. Now I've got a, I've got a really soft spot right here and that's going to come off. So I'm just going to pull it off. Okay. <coughs> and you just kind of have to hope that those places are further down. And that's why you start with a lug of clay that's this big and it's easy for, you know, Herbert to handle. Um, Lots of people, instead of pushing this direction, will push this direction with their fingers like this. And you can see it's the same, same things happening. I'm just pushing this way and you, it's the same thing that happens on the wheel. You got the bump and you're shaping the bump. Okay. And then I go to the other side and do the same thing and it pulls. Um, but I much prefer, I'm getting a little dry here. I much prefer going side to side because I feel like that is, I feel like I get a twist here if I go front to back. Whereas if I go side to side, I don't get that. And when you have something that you feel like, yeah, it's probably long enough. And like some of these, I don't need it to be this long, but um, because I can piece, I can use one of these pieces, curl it up and make that into my curl that I like to have on my pieces. But now that this is finished, I'm just going to, pinch it off here and there's one other thing that you have to do at this stage if you're going to do it and that is curl the tip and to do that you need your hands don't have to be clean but they do have to be dry uh, because otherwise your thumb's just going to slip off but wiggle this end Wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it to get it small. Uncurl, curl, uncurl, curl. And then you'll get that nice tight spiral there. Curl and uncurl. But my normal handle looks something like that at the top and looks something like that at the bottom. Uh, but today we're gonna go crazy with our handles. And I'm just going to swirl this around into a nice little curl here, like that, right? So I just sit this down on the table like this, and then I put my four fingers in. If I have a four, for my hands, if I have a four finger handle while building, then I have a three fingered handle when I go, when it, once it's fired and that's the kind of handle that I like. Okay. I've propped up that up on, onto the clay itself. And now I'm going to help it stand there. So I've got four fingers. I've got it propped up and it's going to sit and firm up like that. One thing I like to do is put that curl off to one side because it's going to curl around the pot. And if it's sitting up here like this, the pot's not straight. So then I have to risk breaking it while I bend it down to uh, touch the pot. But if it sits up like that, and if I'm doing a bunch of them, I can sit them up like that. If I'm not doing a bunch of them, 
then I can just lay it down on the, on the um, table like that. And then you start over. See that? That is, it's trying to come to a point, but I didn't make it into a point to begin with. So now I wanna make that into a point on purpose because um, if I don't, it might trap some air down in there. And air is not ideal. I know, I just started a discussion about how air does not cause explosion, water does. And air does not cause an explosion. But it does create a nice little place for water to come in and gather. <laughs> Focus on the bottom first because it's what's going to pull off if something does pull off. And then I just use my wrist to it the other way, do it this way. Got a fat spot right here. Work on that fat spot for a second. I like to take my fingers like this and push with this part of my finger. There's a hundred different thousand million ways you can hold your fingers to um, do this. But just remember that you're not pulling the clay. You're shaping it. Gravity is pulling it. This one's not going to break. That's long enough. And like everything in clay, if it hangs here long enough, it will straighten out. So gravity pulls your handle. You just shape it. Okay, there we go. So this one, when I lay it down, it doesn't want to. It doesn't. It doesn't want to keep. So this one wants to sit up like this, 
because for whatever reason, this right here, I got too much water on it or, you know, for whatever reason, it just doesn't want to, uh, it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to set up laying down. It wants to set up like this. That's so fun. curly cues in our life. I mean, come on now. You know you do. Guess what I did? I got my slosh buckets mixed up. And there's two different colors of clay in this bucket. Uh, uh, a, new, a new concoction of clay. I do indeed. Oh, kiss my face. I love you too. I need to know what it looks like. But it doesn't have to look like anything if it's just a mug. That makes no sense whatsoever. I should reposition my camera before I do this. I think that might have been mouse poop. We've had a mouse. So uh, in the span that I did all of those other, uh, all nine of the throwing, uh, I've gotten three handles on. <laughs> They're cute though. Beautiful things are waiting for you at collegetimily.com. So make sure you check that out. Thanks for coming everybody.